Coming up on Dining Dish Nation, how do you make an American classic like the hot dog modern? By making them vegan, chili mustard onions does just that. When it comes to fall favorites, you can't leave out soup. Ema serves up more than just a cozy cup of ramen. And one of Detroit's oldest Italian restaurants, Mario's, invites you to dinner and a Broadway show. Hi, I'm Cam Carmen. Welcome to Dining Dish Nation, where we explore the fabulous eateries of Detroit and beyond, where we celebrate the culinary genius that's feeding America's comeback city. Thanks for joining us as we welcome reviewers from our community who've come together to dish about their favorite local restaurants. Dining Dish Nation works like this. Every week we ask three guests, people just like you, to check out three local dining establishments. We're not food snobs here, just real people talking about real food and offering real reviews. We're here at our home base for Dine and Dish Nation, Republic Tavern, where an eclectic menu equals rustic chic in downtown Detroit. They show their love for the community by locally sourcing their ingredients, and they make you feel like royalty because it's in an historic castle. Okay, let's get started. This week, we welcome community relations manager, Daryl Earle, co-founder of Girls Rock Detroit, Melissa Coppola, and retired financial and payroll accountant, Annette Duffany. First up on this week's show, an all-vegetarian Coney Island? You heard me right, chili, mustard, and onions is breaking boundaries by being Detroit's first vegan hot dog joint. Don't think, though, that this means it's not full of flavor. Check it out. I'm Pete Lacombe. I'm the owner and founder of Chili Mustard Onions. So six years ago, uh, we went vegan and I missed comfort food. I was experimenting with vegan food and I, I was liking what I was creating, so I wanted to open a restaurant. So fast forward about five or six years, it took that long, and here I am now. Personally, I think they're, they're better. I do. There's no heartburn, there's no, you don't feel like garbage after you eat it. Um, and for me, the compassion side of it for the animals, um, I feel great about it. Wherever I need it, I buy it, everything is organic. Every time I can do it, I will. My customers deserve the best. I feed my family the best, I feed my customers the best. There's people that eat here twice a day, every day since we opened, and that tells me a lot that, you know, and they're not vegan. People, there's there's tow truck drivers that pull up here, there's police officers, ambulance drivers. Every walk of life comes through these doors, and I love it. I love every second of it. It, it just makes me so happy. And I've been to so many vegan restaurants where you, you kind of leave hungry, you know? So everybody leaves with carryout boxes, so I know I'm doing something right. People are happy. When I was in automotive, um, I was in it for probably 15 years and I worked so many hours, seven days a week, and I never, <laughs> this is so hard, I never got to see my daughter. And now I get to work next to her, so it really makes me happy. It does. <laughs> Chili mustard onions, brand new concept in Detroit. And so what did we think about it? What did you think, Melissa? I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, I was very, very impressed. I've been vegan, vegetarian, kind of on and off since I was oh, okay. 16. Okay. Um, but I'm always up for trying new vegetarian food. And my husband's a new vegetarian, so we were super excited to go. New to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So he was excited to be able to look at the menu, which looks like a traditional Coney Island menu, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, everything's vegetarian. So it's like easy mode. You just pick whatever off the list. Um, I think 
For me, an appetizer was standout, the Southwest Detroit nachos, which was um, waffle fries, and it was topped with what they call chicken. Chicken? <laughs> it's like, yes, it's like a ch um, chicken substitute uh -huh. that was seasoned with lemon pepper. Um, it was very bright and chewy. Um, and then it was also topped with a chive sour cream, or their version of a sour cream, yeah. and um, nacho cheese, which was Awesome. I just really love the nacho cheese. It was very savory, and I think um, you know it's got a particular texture yeah. when you're thinking of that um, type of cheese. And for vegan types of dairy products, it's kind of um, it, it's unpredictable with what you're gonna get. Correct. But it was very spot on. I think it was super cheesy. It made me wondering what is in this because it tasted so close to what I expected to be your normal version of cheese. They've really done their homework too. Yeah, they've really created things that are vegetarian but taste like the real deal. Absolutely. Annette, you were you were talking about the Big Mock. Right. I am a vegetarian, but I haven't had a burger since my early 20s. So I decided to taste the Big Mock, which is flavored after the Big Mac in McDonald's. Yeah. 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 And it was really good. It was a two vegan patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, pickles onions, onions, on a sesame seed bun. bun. <laughs> yes. And it had a charcoal flavor in the vegan meat. And it just took me back and I almost felt guilty about eating it because I don't <laughs> because haven't had a are, burger. And now I want to go back and have one yeah, again. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, and they gave you a whole plate of french fries and you could get cheese on your french fries or chilies, but mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, or on the side too. But no, I was very impressed and a great restaurant and uh, the service was phenomenal too. Awesome. Daryl, how about you? So I had the Big Mac also. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it, it tasted like a Big Mac. It was actually very good because you know sometimes vegan food has like an aftertaste to it. Yes. It didn't have that. Yeah. So and and myself, I'm I'm a very old meat eater, so I'm not a. <laughs> well, I'm a very old meat eater too. So we're <laughs> so, in the same club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good though. I, I had a, a healthy portion of fries. Actually, it was filling. I was very very full after eating that big mac and fries. <laughs> And the cheese sauce, I don't know, like I said, they did something with it. Nice. It was great though, it was a great atmosphere, mm -hmm. great service. Uh, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the restaurant, I enjoyed the energy there. Yes, yes. correct. And then they had uh, spirits, mm -hmm. like, you know, the tequila, the rums, and they had a whole mm -hmm. host of a great menu for adult beverages. Did you have any cocktails, Melissa? Um, I didn't have any cocktails, but I kind of rode the line in between that. Um, I ordered a kombucha, because they had a special brand of kombucha that I hadn't had before. I think it was called New, N-E-U. Um, and it was flavored with uh, lavender and lemonade, and it was super refreshing. Um, what's interesting about kombucha is that there's like a light alcohol content, and it's effervescent, so it's very refreshing. And I think it worked really well with the meal. I really liked it. What was the atmosphere like? I, it was great. They had a lot of paintings on the walls mm -hmm. of rock stars mm -hmm. like Paul McCartney, uh, Joan Jett, Prince. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they're all vegans. Oh my gosh! Oh. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Didn't know that. I did not. Fun facts. It's a one of a kind. It's a brand new um, concept in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really taking off. And I think I wouldn't be surprised to see more mm -hmm. like this. Now onto this week's second venue. Nothing warms you up quite like a bowl of steaming soup. You can find just that and so much more at Ima. This place takes traditional Japanese ramen and amps it up by adding curries and more. Uh, my name is Mike Ransom and I'm the chef owner of Ima restaurant here in Corktown. I was raised on a lot of Japanese ingredients because my folks raised us vegetarian in the 70s. And if you're vegetarian in the 70s, you really had to look towards other cultures to learn how to get your protein. And they focused on a lot of Japanese ingredients, which kind of makes it my comfort food, I guess. We don't try and do traditional. We try and put our emphasis on each dish to make it unique to what we do. First of all, we're doing ramen style broths, but we're using udon noodles. So it's a wider, thicker noodle. It's got a more satisfying mouthfeel. So our broths are unique to us. They're our own recipes we've been working on for probably three years. And the fact that we also do rice bowls as well as noodle dishes, which gives you a lot of exploration into some other 
uh, menu and recipe items. The dining experience, I would say it's it's casual, but still a lot of a lot of energy in the room. It originated with a very very um, very lively kind of environment because there was all communal tables. We wanted it to be something that was very accessible, and that's why our price point is is low. Our staff is the biggest key to our success here. Um, they uh, they do everything they do very well, and they they create that vibe that we consider kind of a signature uh, part of the EMA experience. Our second location will be in Madison Heights at John R. and 13 and a half. And it's gonna be an elaboration of our menu here. And we'll have some, uh, some new dishes to be announced that'll be really exciting for people to try. Corktown is super cool, and Ema, I think, is a great, a great addition. What'd you think about it? I loved it. I'd been there once before, mm -hmm. but it was a really great opportunity to try something new. Um, and I also brought my husband with me, who was new to the restaurant as well. Um, I thought that it was perfect. On, it was just kind of getting cold out, and it's the perfect kind of um, meal to have on a you know cool fall day. Mm -hmm. I had a big bowl of soup, and the bowls are like the size of your head. They're <laughs> enormous, just like really, really generous portions. Um, but I had the uh, forest udon, which is made with porcini broth, mm -hmm. um, and I thought for a mushroom broth it was really really savory and you know, it was just the right amount of salty um, and I'm a big fan of udon noodles mm -hmm. and so it's very refreshing to go to a restaurant that is you know kind of different than your traditional ramen bar where you're getting add-ins it's now udon um, which is a little bit different because the noodles are a little bit thicker a little chewier so it's just kind of a different um, take on your noodle bowl um, but I think that it was fantastic I just loved everything <laughs> and we got to try a lot of different um, little appetizers they were super nice um, they brought out a big plate of pickles for us. Pickles? Um, yeah, so like Asian style pickles. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so they had maybe four or five different types of pickles on this big plate. I'm half Korean, so I love kimchi in all different forms. But I appreciated this one because they said they make it in house. And the way this one is different, it's a little bit smokier. Um, and it's a, I, they definitely use a different type of chili powder than I've had before. I think they use chili powder anyway. They kind of were secretive about what they use in their recipe. Of course, recipe. gotta keep it, gotta keep yeah. it under wraps. Yeah, but super savory, very crunchy, um, definitely spicy, but it was a great way to kind of sample all the different types of um, pickles that you can have in mm -hmm. that, that setting. I also had an appetizer that were the Ema tacos. I didn't know what I was expecting, mm -hmm. um, but when I started chewing, I was like, this kind of tastes like a fresh spring roll. Like it has that same kind of texture and freshness and bright flavor that you would expect in that kind of appetizer, but I just was not expecting it on this taco. It was fantastic. Expect the unexpected. Yes. <laughs> What'd you have, Daryl? So I had yeah. the lobster udon. Okay. Which was uh, extremely good. It was very good. So the flavor profile, you know, is, is different than my palate is used to. Right. So I'm, I'm really keen on, like, the types of flavors that they use and it, like how they all combine together. And like I said, those udon noodles are, are big noodles. So yes. you get full quick. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the, it was... Um, a lobster broth based. It had a f nice aromatic f finish to it, mm -hmm. so it really finished well um, with some green veggies. And I think it had like a, uh, I think it was a, like a green. I it was seaweed. It was a, it was a seaweed? <laughs> yes. Because yeah. I had no. the same thing. The, yeah. yeah. See? No. <laughs> See? <laughs> no, it was good. I enjoyed it. <laughs> So I did, I had to take some home. Annette, you liked it too. Yes, it was a very unique dining experience. And um, for an appetizer, we had the dumplings, shrimp dumplings. And you usually think of a dumpling as being heavy, yeah. but this was very light. They make it in-house and they had this special sauce. It's called a chili black vinegar sauce that was to die for. And it made the dumpling. And then I did have the lobster, because I love lobster tails. Mm -hmm. And they had a big piece of lobster right. inside this broth. Yeah. Two soft eggs, mushrooms, and bamboo shoots. And like you said, it was too much to eat. Yeah. So, but they gave me a huge container to take home. I took the yeah. container home. And I and shared lunch. it with a friend, and she loves soup, and she said that was really tasty, mm -hmm. yes. Um, desserts, anybody? 
I have a dessert. <laughs> Did you also have the strawberries and the, cream? I had the strawberries and cream. It I was loved good. it. It was also very unexpected. Had they not told me, I don't think I would have noticed that it was made out of soy. Um, it had a very creamy, thick texture. It's and a richness it was, to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was very, like, very heavy um, vanilla bean taste, which I mm -hmm. loved. And it complemented the fresh strawberry and the mint super well. And there were some crispies on top. I don't yeah. know what they were, but they it just it all melded very nicely. I was in my happy place. Yes. Yeah. 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 I um, was adventurous and I had my first sake. Yay! Yay. 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 It, was, it was grapefruit ginger flavored in a, it spark, and called sparkling sake. And mm. it was very refreshing. You didn't even know you were drinking alcohol. Plus they did have wine and, yeah. and beer, mm -hmm. I think, yes. Me and my wife went, so we had an opportunity to like experience new food together, which is awesome. I enjoyed the way they, they laid a restaurant out. It's kind of got this three season space where you can like indoor, outdoor-ish, so we sat like picnic table style, mm -hmm. uh, which was real cool because we were kind of outside, but we weren't, mm -hmm. which made it like just kind of real informal, but yet it was cool. Yeah, the place is really, really nice. It was really cool. So Great. what better way to kind of come together but buy food? And now for our final pick of the week, Mario's. It's one of Detroit's few remaining supper clubs. And at Mario's you can find elegance, tableside cooking, and on the weekends, a place to go ballroom dancing. We were lucky enough to be invited to Mario's for a very special night as they hosted the cast of Chicago. Uh, Vincent Pasolacqua, I am the owner and proprietor of Mario's. Mario's was started in 1948. Uh, Mario Lelly was here. Um, uh, my father picked it up in 1980, and um, it's an all-inclusive restaurant, which means when you come in and order your meal, we're not gonna a la carte you. We're gonna give you an antipasto tray. We're gonna give you a salad. We're gonna give you soup. We're gonna give you a pasta and an entree. We're 70 years old, so we have several generations of families that have been here. If walls could talk, I, I have my staff, a lot of them have stayed here 50 years. You don't find one that's under 20 years. Well, I got a few newies, but you know, the, the older ones are 50 years, 50 years is about where we're at. We appeal to the theater crowd, the arts. We went over to the theater and said, well, let's have a party for, you know, the, those folks that uh, do the theater, the arts are traditionally, uh, they live out of their suitcase for six months of the year, so I invite them in and we give them a big meal. So then we started doing cast parties and if you can see all the pictures you'll see, uh, we do a fa uh, like a family photo picture of them and they sign an autograph. And they're really nice people that come in here. It has been a very fun ride. I wouldn't change, if I had another chance to take another life, I'd do it all over again. Looking forward, I think the area is really uh, blossoming. Finally, the renaissance of Detroit is coming back. I've been here since it was uh, not so pretty, and not so great, but we've survived, and we, we, we will still be here and going on, hopefully, to the next generation. Mario's is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, restaurants in the city. It's been there forever and ever and ever. It's been able to stand, you know, the test of time. And it's it's very traditional. Um, what did you have, Annette? I had the eggplant parmesan. And because I, I love eggplant, but I never cook it at home. But it was, it was the eggplant that was lightly sauteed. And then they had the ricotta and um, parmesan and spinach. And then they had the marinara basil marinara sauce over it and then melted mozzarella. It was just to die for. It was very filling and before that they give you so much food. What did you have, Daryl? So I had the surf and turf. Mm -hmm. Oh, the surf and turf was perfect, perfectly cooked. Um, filet mignon, mm -hmm. buttery, based in a zip sauce and the lobster tail was, you know, it was a baked lobster tail, finished very well. It was phenomenal. Uh, Mario's knows how to do their food right. They, yeah. they're, they've been in business this long for a reason, because their food is amazing. If it ain't broke, don't, yeah. don't fix, fix it. it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have, Melissa? I had the chicken, uh, chicken picante, mm -hmm. and um, so it was 
um, the chicken was lightly breaded and it was cooked in I think what was a lemon white wine sauce mm -hmm. and so it was bright and tangy and it came with a couple of like fresh lemon wedges on there um, and it came with like nice hearty side of potatoes and fresh green beans um, and I loved it. That's great. Anybody for dessert? Um, I was no. way too full for dessert. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I was close. I was close. <laughs> but I did have the um, shrimp scampi appetizer mm -hmm. and I was think they're like, oh, it's, you know, it's a the pretty generous portion and I was not expecting these shrimp to be like this big. I've never seen shrimp that big in my life. Wow. Um, very, very, like, just giant shrimp. Colossal. I don't, yeah, colossal. I didn't know they made shrimp that big. Um, and I hadn't had it. <laughs> Um, but the, um, the, you know, the flavor profile of that was also really great. Um, even though it was, you know, these giant shrimps with very, very meaty texture, um, there was a bright sauce to go along with it. You know, very um, lemony, kind of citrusy. I think it may have also been with white wine, but generous parsley, you know. They were also pretty good as leftovers as well. Mm -hmm. I took some home. <laughs> mm -hmm. There you go. Doggy like, bag, please. Yeah, yes. we soldiered yes. through it, though. Yeah. But it yeah. was just a phenomenal dining experience. I mean, you really feel pampered when yes. you go to Mario's. Mm -hmm. And their wine list was extravagant. I mean, they had red wines, white wines, California, Italian, mm -hmm. um, New Zealand, Fran France, and, um, and then vintage, rare vintage yes. wines that were pretty pricey. So I had um, an Italian wine, red wine, and uh, it was very good, very dry. I would tell anyone, man, if you're, if you're a Detroiter or you're visiting Detroit, Mario's, it should be a, a must stop. And as we wrap up, I want to thank my guests for being with us today. Melissa, Annette, and Daryl, thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so yeah, much for you. having us. It was great. And also to our restaurants this week, Chili Mustard Onions, Ima, and Mario's. Coming up next week on Dining Dish Nation, Ocean's Edge right in the middle of Ferndale. Voyager, superior seafood with a casual flair. Cuisine Detroit. Classy yet cosmopolitan, it's one of the most romantic spots in the city for elegant French fare. And it's Grey Ghost's BFF. Second best racks up blue ribbon quality with a red ribbon tag. So join us next time for more real people, real food, and real reviews right here on Dine and Dish Nation. I'm Cam Carmen. Thanks for joining us. And they make you feel like royalty because it's in an historic castle. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We forgot her name in there. <laughs> I know, it's fine. By being Detroit's first ve vegan, vegan hot dog joint. Don't think that. Now on to this week's second ven bleh.